you're reaching out to prospects, you're calling people, you're sending emails, and you ain't getting jacked back. Imagine though, just for a minute, just, just for a minute, imagine if you could reach out to people who are indicating they're ready, so you have some kind of trigger, to give you some ideas of a problem they have so you can formulate your message, and then three, you actually get a chance to connect and have good conversations, book appointments. Wouldn't that be great? And here's the beautiful part about it. You won't have to spend hours doing research. Well, I'm going to solve that problem for you today. At least not me, but my guest. And he's going to tell you all about it. Ooh, baby. It's going to be good. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode today, we're going to solve a problem for you. We're going to give you some relevant info when you're reaching out to your prospect. My guest today is Mr. Ravi Gupta. He is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Evabot. And they are solving a problem that you and I are so annoyed with where you're, we're told to personalize, and I tell you this, personalize your message, make it relevant, but you ain't got time, you ain't got the resources to do all of that research, and you don't know the most important parts. They're going to do this for you, and it's powerful. And we're going to tell you all about it. If this is your first time listening to our podcast, go subscribe, write it down, take a picture, and we'll tell you, we'll notify you every time we do a new episode so we can tell you all about it. On today's episode, we're going to break down this process, and Robbie and I are going to go through and show you specifically through some examples and also through some some strategy and explain this, why cold calling is evolving, specifically cold calling 2.0 and how this works when it comes to AI to make you not only more relevant, but also at scale. Ooh, it's good. Let's go do this thing. Let me go get my call ready. Let's do this thing. Robbie, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Donald. Thank you for having me. Really excited about this. Yeah, and I'm really looking looking forward to it uh, as well. And some those who are listening to this podcast, who follow me, they probably have seen a thing or two um, about you you guys on my feed. Uh, uh, you guys have some good content, so I appreciate that. Um, and this is why I want to do this episode because I think it makes so much sense where we are right now in this in terms of selling. Um, the people are looking for buyers. And prospects are tired of the same old, same old. They're tired of getting pitched with the watered down pitches. They're tired of, um, you know, garbage. And we as sellers need to be way more effective. We need to put more into the conversation, but it doesn't have to be a lot of work. And that's why I feel you bridge that gap for us um, and can help us out with that. So I, I'm looking to dive into that. But tell, I, I bragged about you a little bit in a teaser. <laughs> tell me a little bit more about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and about your company. On a day-to-day -day basis, like I'm the co-founder CEO of a startup. So, you know, just like you and many others, like we need to dive into many things depending upon what's top of the mind or priority right now. But I mostly look after the product and um, I love talking to potential customers like uh, people in sales. So, so yeah, uh, that is on the other side. But I mostly uh, try to figure out what problems can we solve uh, for salespeople with our product. Love it. So let's go into this right now. Um, I saw state, uh, Salesforce State of Sales. One of the things they talked about was how uh, the, the trying to get a hold of people I mean, is always tough. You know, salespeople spend 30% of their time actually selling majority of their time and doing admin stuff and, and other things. Um, we have something unique that came, over, came about in society, and that's the advent of artificial t intelligence, where it can really help us um, in our approaches. But I want to talk about that gap you're bridging, but also helping salespeople when it comes specifically to sounding more relevant. How can I be that person that the prospect, when they get my email, they're saying, Donald knows me, or Donald knows of my problem clearly enough, or Donald called at the exact right time mm -hmm. that I'm trying to solve this problem. If we can help salespeople to get to that point and it's not taking them days to do that, magic can happen. So I want to start off by you have a definition for cold calling 2.0, and I would love for you to tell me what that is. Yeah, so so you actually asked uh, a ton of questions there. Uh, I know, I know. Let's start with cold, <laughs> cold calling and we'll come back into this. Yeah, so uh, cold calling 2.0, as we call it, is, is, is all about, um, you know, in today's world where you can actually parallelly dial so many numbers, um, 
and the other people are getting fed up with receiving so many calls, uh, especially your buyers. Um, so what needs to change? I think what mm-hmm. needs to change is if you're calling someone, like be very, very specific. Why are you calling? Don't try to use tricks and stuff like that. Try to try to actually uh, pinpoint the pain you feel they are facing right now and start there. Uh, so start with your research, right? Like, why are you calling? You're calling because you saw that their their seat, uh, seat growth is contracting instead of expanding. Did you see something in their uh, quarterly report or earnings call that, that you know, uh, helped you understand that uh, of challenge that they are facing? And that is why you are calling. Whatever it is, just be very specific. And we have seen that once you do that, um, one of my sales reps, like uh, he actually called a CRO once. Uh, he called the CRO and he, he talked something like that. He said like, hey, you know, I saw that like you guys are, are hiring at least 100 people out of the country uh, in London. Like, uh, is that correct? And that person started chatting because he he thought this is a shareholder who has a lot of information about my company. <laughs> <laughs> so then after like five minutes, he's like, oh, I, I, I thought you're a shareholder in my company. That's why, you know, I started talking to you. But but no one has ta- called me before with such specific information, right? So so that is what we are calling, you know, um, you know, outbound to auto or cold calling to auto where um, how can AI help with the deep research, uh, relevant research, timely research, and gives you talking points um, versus just, uh, you know, giving you, giving you uh, talking points based on very, very bad data or, mm. or very shallow data in a way. Yeah. And I think that's the part there, the shallow data that makes it not as engaging for me as a, as a, when I'm on the receiving end. Whereas like, Donald, I saw you went to BYU. It was like, big whoop. Like, <laughs> anybody could see that. <laughs> yeah. Donald, you have a podcast. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's correct. So, so that's, that's an over level. So how can AI help me to find the people that are the right fit right now? Um, and then, I guess, to identify the triggers. Because I think that's the first part when it comes back to that story. Like, find the people who are the right fit. And then we can go into the messaging component with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and by people, I, I assume you mean also the accounts, right? Like which yeah, accounts. accounts and, yeah, me. yeah, they're right. So uh, I think I think what happened with generative AI, especially like uh, salespeople, everyone got really excited about generative AI, and we we fell into the trap. And the trap was now you anyone can generate emails or anyone can write whatever they want, right? And the biggest problem with that is, you know, bad data plus generative AI is equal to terrible outcomes. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, think about it. Now everyone knows that you have a podcast and they don't even need to know. They can just plug in their AI and everyone will be reaching out to you with the same thing, right? Yeah. So we realized that the biggest thing that we have to solve for is do bespoke research, right? So if your company is, is, is targeting, say, another company, say XYZ, the things that you will look for in that company uh, from their financial documents or news articles or websites will be completely different from what I am trying to sell because my product can be completely different or solutions can be completely different. Yeah. So we realize that this AI has really good reasoning ability and we actually build our product over a period of one year, just building on top of the reasoning abilities of AI versus the generative AI. Uh, and the idea was, you know, if we can just scrape the overall internet and actually figure out needle in haystack, like really, really deep hidden information uh, that is relevant to you, right? And only to you. So if that research is not relevant to any other company, right? So that was the main insight that we got and uh, and and how we built our product. And that differentiates us uh, from any other company. So when we look for say 100 accounts based on what your product does, what your company does, what pains, pain points you care about versus another company that cares about different pain points, the same hundred accounts that I'm doing research on will be scored completely different than, you know, hundred accounts, the same hundred accounts that we scored for you. Right. Mm. So, so that's, that's the main differentiation that, you know, we do bespoke research. We look for very custom signals and we look for overall internet, like wherever the data is uh, versus very specific websites and stuff. So that then gives you a very comprehensive, very, very, very detailed and relevant research. 
You know, and I think that's a critical component, right? Like if I can if I if if I can call people or contact people who are ready right not so much ready right now, but the the triggers or indicators help me to understand that these people are in a good spot. They may not necessarily be ready to buy from you today, Donald, but they have a need relative to what you can offer. And I for the for the longest time yeah. we've never had that um as sellers. We've had LinkedIn that can give us some measure but not like to take advantage of a scope where AI can help us to crunch information or crunch data to guide us to say this is a, a good avenue. Am I making sense on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, and especially for mid-market enterprise sales, right? Like most of this used to happen during discovery calls, right? Yes. And that is where you would have like at least five or six discovery calls to actually get very, very deep to the problem, right? And, but today you can actually cut off those like out of the five calls, maybe you just need to do one call, even for a large enterprise sales company, because AI can actually find relevant pains that the company is facing, tie it back to your solution and give you the exact thing you want to talk about or ask about, right? So we believe that, you know, that is going to happen. Most of the mature sales teams will will quickly get to the point <laughs> versus having a process of discovering pain versus they would already know the pain. I love the example you gave about your sales rep who um, was able to, you know, sound like a, you sound like a shareholder because he came with a specific things um, with that. But I, 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 can you go a little bit more into that? If I'm, if I'm a, a sales rep listening to this and I'm, and I like what you're you know, I was saying, Donald and Robbie, I like what you're sharing. I like the idea of targeted accounts. I, I get that. Uh, I like the idea even more so. Now you're giving me data to be able to focus on the right accounts, the right companies that may be a, a good fit for me right now um is and i'm gonna do a, a a little plug here for you guys with eva bot how do you do that or what can i get as if i'm going to use eva bot as a sales rep how can that actually work for me um does it need to be only for enterprise accounts or if i'm doing a a regular account can i find accounts uh, with eva bot that can help me to do that yeah. So, so first of all, we don't, we don't give you accounts directly. What we can do is if you pull in your accounts from Apollo or zoom info, mm -hmm. wherever you can small or big, doesn't matter because sure. every company meaningful will leave some sort of online footprint, right? Yes. And we can track any footprint, like be it job openings, be it their website, LinkedIn posts, anything, right. Or financial documents. So the idea is that as long as uh, a company is meaningful and you provide us a list, um, our AI agent works very differently from other agents, say Clay. Clay, you have to be very specific that, hey, you know, go to this website, do this thing for me. So you have to come up with ideas with us. You just tell us like what pain points you care about, what is your pitch, right? And rest is done by our agent. So it will look at everything, then filter out everything. And it's also, it also making sure that the information is accurate because that is where we have seen the biggest challenge. Even companies like LinkedIn, Zoom Info will provide you wrong information and if you want to test it right now just go to box because box has a very common name <laughs> you will see that the strategic priorities of box company which is a public company on linkedin it says something like uh, box is looking to have a, a sustainable packaging or something like that solution as a strategic priority for a public company so so like making sure that all the information is accurate and and uh, and actually relevant to you is 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 what makes us different yeah, and I think so. I think that's where the again it, it cuts off some of that time for for the individual sellers. Um, we we know now we understand we're getting some of these triggers. It's helping us with that messaging, um, helping us to prepare for the cold call or our cold outreach. Um, let, let's talk about how can it help me with uh, how can it help a sales leader to know that their teams, when it comes to research or AI in general, how can that help me? How can I feel confident as a sales leader, knowing that my team is not going to be wasting time or um, the, you know, because as soon as I talk about some of the stuff like research, as soon as any sales leader here that research, they're thinking my salespeople are not going to be doing any work or if they're going to do high level personalization, they would rather them do a bunch more activity and get the results from that because that's guaranteed as opposed to, or not so much guaranteed, it's much better rather than to waste time working. But Talk to me about that component, about uh, how AI makes that research relevant, effective, and solve that problem for the sales leader. Yeah, that's, that's a very really good question. There. So so again, like you're right. So 
so first of all what we do is we do the research and we give nuggets like which are like small uh, say snackable research format and yeah. we want your sales reps to read through them and that is why we don't generate uh, sequences automatically you have to select insights right so our like the sales reps read the research quickly so first of all they get to know a little bit about the account right they select the research and then they can generate call preps they can generate emails they can generate linkedin messages whatever but but because of this process sales reps are able to generate relevant content but also learning very quickly about the accounts they are trying to reach out to yeah and all of this call prep uh, one great example is this call prep can be pre-generated and goes into your nooks or orum or outreach so when your sales reps are calling as soon as the call call is picked up you can immediately see the research and with like very specific points that you can talk about yeah and i i think that's what makes it so exciting for me um someone who works with teams and somebody who you know has done it um from the front end standpoint is now that my my team I can have the assurance that they're going to sound better. And the other part is that we're not just creating robots um, because with the insights you're providing, we take that insight and then we help to craft something as a seller, right? And it, it's not just a cookie cutter. And, I, and that's where I feel like so many people would, will think they're like, well, AI is going to do my job for me. <laughs> and, yeah. and it's like, well, you know, you got to do something, kid, if you're going to be a seller and we need you to be able to be curious. And uh, you just don't have to spend hours doing that research. And you're, we're pointing out to you some of the most important things that you could utilize to make that messaging so much, uh, sound more effective. Correct. Yeah, you're truly exactly right. Like, see, sellers have a job to do. Yeah. And research is not, I mean, part of their job. Even if it's, like, important, no one is really, like, very few people are really good at research, right? Very few. Even like research <laughs> assistants are not great at research. So if you tell them to read 10K reports like every day, they'll be, they'll just leave the job, right? So seller's job is like to identify the pain and then sell the solution and then build the relationship over a period of time and then like uh, do the expansion, whatever, right? So we are basically helping them do their job better. Uh, so the same sales rep can now be two to three times more productive. Our idea is that, like, see, most of the other AI tools are trying to replace average sales reps. Yeah. And that is why this AI, SDR, and all of that. Our idea is that we will help, we will use AI to help your sales reps mimic top 1% of the sales rep. I like that. Uh, and, and I think uh, some some people are probably going to, you know, they, they get disappointed <laughs> when, they, <laughs> when, they, when they don't, like, I feel when they don't find a silver bullet, right? Every silver, it, it's just that I don't feel that that's out there. I, I would guarantee there's no silver bullet that's out there yeah. where I put something in a system, it provides, provide the perfect email and the perfect call script, and then it does the work for me. And I just sit there and just answer <laughs> to the prospect objection like that. That's not there. Um, and I think this part helps it helps me to feel more confident as a seller, but it also helps me to feel reassured as a sales leader that my individual contributors are now no they're they're understanding the why behind it, yeah. and this will help them to be way more curious and be more effective when it comes to the relevant messages um, that they have um, with it. Correct. Um, so, so I, I need to scale this though when it comes to the calling standpoint. Um, talk to me about that. I we we have we're doing focus accounts. We're getting the rich information now. But how do I scale this to throughout a team? What, let's say it's a small team. I have 10 people. How do I scale this concept? Yeah. So uh, we did an experiment with ourselves, right? Like, uh, especially for cold calling, um, where first of all, you have to like um, change something in your trainings so that, you know, the first thing you want to do is like have a very good call to conversation, like pick up to conversation ratio, right? And what we have seen is if you start with, the research part first versus like any other greetings like it works mm -hmm. really well because today everyone is like hey i'm this i'm calling from this like who are you like we 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 simply say hey when you call just talk about like hey uh, uh you're ravi from evabot i saw that you guys are you know hiring new sdrs or something whatever it is right just yeah. start with your research so that is the that is part one like of training uh, once you have a good call to uh, call pick up to conversation ratio, then you basically think about um, doing as many calls as possible, right? So at that point, like Eva Bot can help you research all your uh, all your uh, prospects, you know, generate the insights, generate the call prep also in in the framework you want, 
and then push the call prep directly to your outreach so that it gets picked up in your nooks or or on power dialer mm-hmm. and at that point when your reps are also trained to use the research the right way you can actually scale it to any level you want right uh, so if they were calling like 100 people uh, a day you can now do 300 to 400 people a day right it's crazy it's crazy yeah <laughs> So that's what we did, and then like we saw two to three times more results, of course. So, when you say the results, as far is that booked appointments then? Um, booked the, appointments the, for us, correct. Two to three times more booked appointments, simply because they're not one. They have information. They're starting off with the relevant uh, issue, and two, that's correct. They're increasing yeah. the velocity, the the volume. Yeah, we first uh, tried the it. second thing first, and it didn't work because we realized that you know you have to do the use the research the right way. So we first yeah. focused on improving the the call to conversation, uh, sorry, pick up to conversation, and then we we scaled it, scaled the numbers. Um, the I, I I like the I like that idea. There's some research there, and I think as sales leaders listening to this or individual contributors, you could test that too. Um, and and then go back to something you mentioned that I also found like uh, you know really fascinating um, is the this the the notion of starting off with the with the problem. Um, yeah. instead of winding up and going for hour you know not hours but you know taking such a long time to get to what it is like most people since they're so uh, i think we talked about hit on this a little bit they're overwhelmed by all the messages that they're getting right now so if we can go straight in and it sound when you can sound like you know what you're talking about or sound like you are like me then and not a salesperson i am more willing to have that dialogue with you so again go back to whether the 10k or whether it's the element you found about hiring or the, you know the 2% growth in the sales team since last year whatever but yeah. those things make me feel as a recipient that this person is a part of my village and i should give them a time of the day if that makes sense yeah correct and see most of the time we think that um you know you will always find the product that you need but that is not true right because so many pains that we face um yeah. even though we are a startup we buy a ton of solutions especially yeah. in machine learning and engineering right like so we we are, everyone is always trying to solve a problem it's not about that you know uh, i understand the problem right so so th- there is a great differentiation here uh, with intent data right so intent only happens when you exactly know what problem you are going to solve you exactly know what competition is there and you have looked at all the competition that is when the intent is there right to buy something but at that moment a mid market enterprise company has already lost the opportunity to act as a trusted advisor so what we say is like if you find the pain way before the intent is there then you have the ability to actually become an, a trusted advisor right and then you're like hey i saw that you guys are facing challenges in hiring internationally right maybe we can help right at that moment like they are willing to listen to you and if you if you if you start on day 1 then most likely you are the winner right uh, when they yeah. when they go and look at other competition you see what this reminds me of where you come back to the statement find the pain before the uh, intent is there um i had i was in one of my marketing classes and i'm sure you've heard the story about this um uh it was this this dad got upset with the local target because they're sending a pregnancy things to his yeah, yeah that was very popular <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's just fascinating because Exactly. What happened was like based on these behaviors that's happening clearly yeah. she's pregnant. So based yeah. on these if I and that's where I think like you know people don't realize the power of AI. If we can pull data like that or pull behaviors not so data but behaviors like that and give me like you're saying this clear idea well this is a proposition down this company it looks like this is what they're doing that changes the game. And if I can use my noggin, use my brain a little bit and put some of these points together from the information um because if i've solved this one problem for somebody else guaranteed it's probably going to be the same the same symptoms that others are facing and and that's, that's a great anecdote way. actually I'll, i'll use right. that one that target story <laughs> <laughs> where people understand what we are doing yeah, yeah it's amazing i love it man um so th- there's so much with this in arabi i i think we could talk for days um yeah. <laughs> because uh, we're both passionate about this but i i'm just i just feel very strong that my mission is to elevate the way that sales people are selling Um we want to elevate uh, get the message out what's better 
how can we do better uh, do better at our craft? And you guys are on the front lines physically doing this with technology, and I appreciate that. And it's fun to be able to see tools that ref- feel refreshing that tools are out there making that happen. Um, yeah, no, no, we are excited too. Uh, you know, building this for salespeople where I believe with AI now, some of the toughest problems can be solved. And that is what yeah. we are here to do. Let's go. If people want to check out your uh, EvaBot, um, and I know you, we didn't do a whole big plug on it, but I do uh, <laughs> talked about you at the beginning, and I'm and I'm going to put a link down below as well. But if people want to check out EvaBot to learn about what you guys are doing and how you're solving this problem for salespeople, what's the best way for them to go about doing it? The best way is, of course, go to EvaBot. Uh, we do have uh, uh, you know schedule a demo button, so just click on it, uh, schedule a demo. Our team will be happy to take you through the product, and we also do like. POV demo. So like even during the first demo, uh, we can have a, a point of view set up from, from your company's perspective. So you can directly see some potential targets. I feel that's the best part. Um, I, I've had those, uh, you know, uh, been a part of teams because it's, and, and uh, I'll shut up after the story. There's a, we sold a software back in the days, way before box. Um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, some of these other digital platforms where you can become create a electronical filing cabinet. So instead of having all these paperwork and we sold to the government because they were slower, like city, county governments and K-12. Robbie, every time we did a demo and we did one to say like the finance department and we had like, uh, you know, we, the, the filing cabinet was say like invoice, if it says invoice Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, whatever. And it was an HR team that we were demonstrating to, I should say. And we showed them the finance stuff. They'll be like, oh, this doesn't work for us. But I'm yeah. like, no, it works. It's just a different thing. But when you can bring their own data in, it makes such a big difference. And I think yeah. when, uh, if you, as you guys are listening to this, please take them up on an offer and go check out their company, get your teams and go get a demo from them and use some of your data. And you'll see how remarkable this thing is. So, right. Thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah, thanks, Donald. Hey, I told you, man, that was Robbie. And if you want to get a chance to check out EvilBot, go in the show notes, check out the link, and go get a demo. And what I love about it, too, you can see how those demos that are focused on your data make such a big difference, and Robbie and his team is willing to help you out with that. Check it out. Tell him that you heard about him here on the Sales Evangelist Podcast, and I know he'll be super excited for that. I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. We want you to be able to sell better in more effective ways. We want you to be able to get a hold of the right people. We want you to have more meaningful conversation. We want Prospect to feel like, man, what did I do when I didn't before I spoke to Mary or Lisa or Jermaine or Andrew? They want to be with you and to learn from you because you're such a dang good seller. You know your problem, know their problem better than they know the problem. You, like Robbie said, you understand the pain before the pain became a, a an, an intent, and uh, you can solve that. Check out EvaBot. As always, I want you to thrive. I want you to raise your level of thinking. If you want to check out our mastermind or our LinkedIn prospecting course, find information down in the show notes. Most importantly, raise your level of thinking. Go out and do big things. See you on the next one. Thank you.